How's it going fellow crafters? So a couple weeks ago I was perusing the shelves of Dollar Tree and I came across these. These are AIM Precision Floss Picks. Now I've used floss picks in other projects but these had a very unique shape to them. And within a few seconds of seeing these I instantly thought of these. If you don't know what these are, these are Dwemer Automatons from the game Skyrim. I've always been inspired by their structure and the lore behind them, so I'm thinking I want to create one of those. Today I'm going to try and do the Ballista, and then I'll probably try some other variants. So without further ado, I'm going to take my inspiration from the floss picks, look through my bits box, and see if I can come up with something. Wish me luck. Going into this project, all I knew is that I wanted to make the legs out of the floss picks. With that being said, I knew it would be really fragile, so I had to make a nice sturdy base. I covered the base in milliput. I could sculpt it like rock, and I could also make small divots with the picks that I could anchor the model to later. And then to add some scenery, I pushed in rocks straight into the milliput. I plan on having the model climbing over the rocks. Having your model interact with the scenery on its base really brings it to life. I cut the picks into segments. I cut a small segment where the hook is for the feet. I then cut a slightly longer segment that would connect to the body. At this point, the main structure where the legs would attach was made out of a bottle cap and some gear buttons from Walmart. However, when I was sizing this up to the base with the legs, I realized it was a little too bulky, so I'd end up ditching this later on. To resemble a joint where the two segments of the leg connect, I use these glass beads from Michaels. Knowing that the bottle cap was too bulky, I went about redesigning the mainframe. To make the bottom portion of the body, I exclusively used the gear buttons. And to bring this all together, it was just a matter of super gluing them together. And I ended up gluing another large button to the large button on top, and I was very careful to line up the teeth. To attach the legs to the main body, and to attach the segments of the legs to each other, I used my method that I used in my Sturge build. Essentially, I wet one piece, and then dip that in baking soda, and then add a bead of super glue to the other piece, and then carefully connect them together. This gives me a strong but clean bond. If you want a more in-depth explanation of this method, check out my Sturge video. I go into detail there. And here I'm just reinforcing that bond with some more super glue. And whenever I'm using this method, I always have a toothpick on hand. This can be used to clean up any excess baking soda or any pooling super glue. At this point, the milliput was still drying, so I could poke the floss picks into the milliput to create divots. I could then later go in and add some super glue to anchor it in. Once I had these two legs done, I could glue the model to the base and then I could have fun arranging all the different legs. bottom done I can move on to the top and there were several characteristics from the Skyrim model that I wanted to capture. I wanted to have the bow and the upward facing spears and I also wanted to have the dome armor on the top. I was struggling with figuring out what to use for the dome armor but then it hit me as I was leaving the grocery store. The plastic bubble packs that you get out of vending machines are excellent for making curved metal plates. However it was a bit tricky to get this apart. I found that a saw was the safest cleanest way to do so. After you made your cut with a saw, you can clean it up with a knife.
Once you have the piece in halves, it's much more manageable to cut. I found that a small pair of scissors worked well. At this point, I needed to shorten them up. Luckily, these are transparent, so drawing the lines and matching them up is pretty easy. Next up, I had to make the bow. I turned back to the unique aesthetic of the floss picks. It was really important that the angle of this cut matched up so that the bow would be symmetrical. I decided that I wanted a vertical support, so I used the toothpicks again. I cut the floss pick in a certain spot so there would be a small protrusion at the end. And to connect these, I continued with the super glue and baking soda method. And here's a better look at that protrusion at the front. I then super glued the curved pieces to the bow segments. I wasn't worried if the seam was uneven because this would be covered up. These and all the loading mechanisms need something to sit on. So I used a thin piece of XPS foam. If you don't have XPS foam, you could use chipboard for this. I then used a permanent marker to make a groove where the spears would go. If you're not familiar with foam, a permanent marker will slightly melt it. This allows you to make etchings into it. Because I planned on using super glue to connect all the other pieces, I had to cover the foam in a protective coating of black paint and Mod Podge. Before I moved any further forward, I thought it was a good idea to black bomb the bottom half. Once I added all the top pieces, it might be hard for the paint to reach all the nooks and crannies. It was at this point I decided that those top pieces needed some more detail. So to do so, I cut strips out of cardboard, the same kind that you'd find on a cereal box. then added rhinestones to represent rivets. With the two bow and shield pieces done, I could take them out and black bomb them, and then do a partial assembly. point I can really see it coming together. Now it was time to add the spears, all the loading mechanisms, and some miscellaneous details. I started by making a very small detail out of one of the small gear buttons. To make the loading mechanism, I started with one of the medium gear buttons. This would serve as the magazine that holds the spears. To 
disconnect the spears, I used super glue and baking soda. I decided to not attach the other part of the magazine until after painting. That way I could reach in all the nooks and crannies between the spears. In addition to this magazine, I also cut four halves of the small gear buttons. These would serve as the gears that turn the mechanism. After black bombing all those pieces, I added two of the half gear buttons under the dome armor. At this point I realized that I needed two hooks that pull back the string, so I used the very ends of the floss picks to do so. And after adding these, I'd have to make two more grooves where these could slide forward and back. At this point I painted everything in a brass goldish color and then highlighted with gold. Once the paint had dried, I could connect the loading mechanisms. And for a final step, I added a liberal amount of black wash. This would make it look old. If you want to take it a step further, you could use some rust effects and maybe some streaking as well. Overall, I'm pretty happy with this build. I've been wanting to do one of these Dremor structures for a very long time, but their complexity always intimidated me. But however, once I saw those floss picks, I knew I could do it. This is a great example of how one item in a store can inspire you. So always keep your eye out wherever you are, because there's inspiration everywhere. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. If you want to help the channel, there's Amazon affiliate links down below. But until next time, keep on crafting.